another hit, Baby Bonds. I'm going to get this thing started. I'm Coach E. This is The Recess. The Recess dedicated to urban youth baseball and softball and all sports across the country. We, bring in, we shed a light on what is important to us, by us, and everything like that. So um, a brief introduction to Kenny Hampton. Kenny Hampton is, uh, um, has a very diverse athletic background. He's doing marvelous and wonderful things in Ohio, straight from Detroit. You see his hat and everything yes, like sir. that. Yes, sir. Always repping. His, um, HBCU product. So that's a, that's always special to me. Um, so, Kenny, you know, I could go on and on about you. You know, I did my homework, my research, saw the episodes and everything of uh, uh, your podcast, IG Live Series. So can you um, just talk to the audience about your athletic background and how it brought you to where you are today? Man, you know what? First, I definitely got to say shout out to you. I appreciate you even having me on. Um, you have an amazing platform, big guy. So continue doing what you're doing. You add a lot of value to the lives of others. So I definitely want to shoot, shout you out and let the uh, let the audience know that um, I'm, I'm, I'm a fan as well. So keep doing what you're doing. Uh, but as far as like my athletic background, you know, I, was, I can remember being four years old, dragging around that big plastic bat and that big white plastic ball, right? That's, yep. that's that that was my introduction to sports and it was I was constantly on a softball diamond with mom and dad because being, you know, in Detroit, that's what that's what the parents was doing back in the day. Like they they stayed playing softball and they were like big time softball players. I'm talking a few nights a week doing that, right? So, um I just uh, at the age of 4, man, I fell in love with the sport of baseball and that's all she wrote, to be honest with you. I never even played t-ball because I was so good um, just being able to hit the ball because I was I was constantly being tossed up uh, one of them big, like I said, big white plastic balls. Yeah. And I was smacking the ball over the field, man, in between innings or after games and stuff like that. So um, did a lot of great things in Little League and just uh, kept it going all the way through high school and landed myself a, a scholarship to Kentucky State. Playing baseball, man. And uh, it's my first love, but it's not the sport that I ended up playing professionally. We'll, we'll dive into that as well. Absolutely. But uh, that's the sport that I was first introduced to, and I just fell in love with it. Facts. Shout out to Kentucky State. The Bridge are in the building, man. We got a lot yes. of love. Yes, sir. The green and gold, you know. Um, so, you know, I heard you talking to, talking to us about um, – you playing multiple sports and two sports. How difficult was it playing two sports in high school and two sports in college? Well, I'll be honest with you. Um, it, it wasn't as challenging as it may have may look from the outside. Um, I, I give a lot of my, uh, you know, playing those two sports. I give a lot of like what I am today as far as like my discipline and my obedience. Because anybody that knows me, like obedience is like really, really high. And on, and on my priority list just because I'm the oldest of four and uh, you know I'm a servant leader so I just love to be able to to, to really be that example by my lifestyle to help other people but um, you know playing those two sports actually just kept me out of a lot of trouble you know growing up in Detroit you can easily slip into all types of stuff whatever you want to tap into is available right yeah. so uh, growing up you know in, in the hood it's like you got all these things going on but when you have a sport, or not not just one sport, but two sports that you're preparing for, if you think about it, like you're just, your summers, it's a wrap. Like you're constantly just doing something. Like I remember vividly, man. There would be times where I would have basketball practice in the morning, and I have baseball games or practice in the afternoon and evening. And to be honest with you, that's my whole day. So like, yep. girlfriends and all that stuff. They was it's like, I mean, you ain't got no time for me. I'm like, I know, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm trying my best, but if you if you got to move on. Trust me, I understand. Absolutely. I just don't have enough time for you because I'm committed to I, – I saw sports as a vehicle, man. Like, I really see sports as just a vehicle to drive us to some unique places in life. So I was willing to give that thing as much gas. I was made, willing to make sure it had everything possible in place for me to take it as far as God would allow. So that's how I looked at the two sports, man. And uh, I'm thankful to be able to, to play two sports collegiately. So it's a cool experience, man. Absolutely. Um, and, it, and it's very, it's very unique. And, you know, it's ironic, I should say, that you mentioned that the sports kept you out of trouble and everything, because my high school coach was on the recess last weekend. He made a challenge to the mayor of Chicago to 
provide more funding for inner city sports to prevent violence. Mm -hmm. So it's 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 same message across the United States, no matter where we're at. So especially in yeah. Black America. Absolutely. So I recently, you know, I was doing my research and history about you. You know, I, I, I saw you do the great interview with uh, Sherry and the basketball moms. <laughs> yeah. I dug a little deeper, you know, you was highlighting coaches and everything. And then I ran across your publication of the underdog mentality, right? Yeah. So can you talk to us about the underdog mentality publication and actually what does underdog mentality mean? Okay, man. And you know what? Um, you know, shout out to Sherry. That was a great conversation with her. Yep. Um, and, and her 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 story and just some of the things that she has overcome in life. That is, uh, I, I can relate because I, I, I identify with some of the things that some of the hurdles that she uh, overcame, you know, regarding being um, a, a collegiate athlete and also being a parent, you know. Um, that's just not something that uh, if you're not mentally prepared for that, that could really set you back. But to use that as a stepping stone and not a stumbling block, man, truly is a blessing. Um, but as far as the underdog, that's exactly what that is. The underdog, we're, we're expected to lose. You're expected, you, you're given very little chance of, uh, you know, of, of success. And the underdog mentality came to me at, at my lowest in life. I want to say about three and a half years ago where I'm out of, uh, I'm done playing professional arena football. I'm done uh, really, you know, doing anything with the NFL as far as scouting and stuff like that. And I'm just an IT manager. And at okay. this point, man, I'm like, man, this is whack. Like, I hate who I am, <laughs> man. Like, I didn't grow up in, in the fifth grade when the teacher asked me what I want to be when I grow up. I didn't raise my hand and say I want to be an IT manager. No, nah, I didn't. I didn't say I wanted to be in sales and stuff like that. Absolutely not. So, man, I ain't gonna lie to you. I had slipped into a tough depression. Okay. And uh, I was battling that. I was battling identity crisis. I hated going back to Detroit because the only time that, you know, going back to Detroit was a reminder of of my failures to, to me because I'm thinking. Man, my goal was to get mom and dad out of the hood. You know, my goal was to take care of family and friends and things like that. And I'm no longer able to do that. And that that dream is gone. And so, um, you know, I, I dealt with some dark times. But the underdog mentality came to me, um, and, and God made it clear to me, like, listen, like, yo, 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 your purpose wasn't for you to make it because it had you made it, you wouldn't. There's some things that you don't know that would have transpired that may have taken you down a, the wrong path. But your purpose was for you to go through that path, I mean, through that destination in order for you to sow into the lives of these other athletes. And um, the scripture that, that really hits home to me, man, that I stand on now is Romans 8, 28. You know, all things working together for our good. And so what I did was, man, I got excited about that and said, you know what? It's time for me to like, really like put this out. And so I just started writing. I just started really like just taking notes on my life, documenting some things. And uh, my mentor was like, look, you know, I really think that you should consider naming the title of your book, The Underdog Mentality. Okay. Um, shout out to Kobe Bryant. You know, he, when he dropped the Mamba Mentality, that really helped us kind of come into the underdog mentality because, bro, like the name of the book was supposed to be like Eight Steps to Developing a Together Mindset. Like that's right. whack. Like, <laughs> ain't nobody picking that up off, off the shelf, man. Right. So he was like, bro, listen, you went from being five six in your senior year of high school to six two, six three. So you went from being point guard to now center. And you you've done all these things that people have looked at your life like you weren't supposed to do those. You weren't supposed to play college baseball and college football, but you did. I didn't play I didn't play uh, organized football until my senior year of college. Wow. So my whole life is, is all about being the underdog. So he was like, look, you need to go ahead and name this thing the underdog mentality. And that's where it came from. But the underdog mentality is simply embracing the idea that um, you can do all things, right, uh, through Christ who strengthens you. So, like, you're able to tap into some things, like kind of like how David was. That's why David is – the slingshot is on the cover of the book. Because that represents the one of the, the, the most famous underdog battles, which is David versus Goliath. But a lot of people don't realize that David actually had some practice before he fought Goliath. So he fought, he killed a bear, he killed a lion. So that means he walked up to Goliath thinking, if I've done some stuff I wasn't supposed to do in the past, I can do something else. Like, I can blow your mind with this. 
and that's what you and I can do because there's yep. some things that I'm sure you have overcome, man, that you like. I, I, the odds were stacked against me. I wasn't, I didn't belong there, but yet here I am victorious. And that's where the underdog has come, man. And uh, I'm enjoying it. I'm embracing it. I'm able to sow that into a lot of people's lives. And they're excited because what we're seeing is people are transitioning from being underdogs to now their favorites expected to win because they, they're they believing in themselves. And they're now saying, you know what, because I've overcome some other stuff, I can overcome this too. Man, I'm so glad that you dropped that, you know, and you know, later on, a lot of people watch, you know, the recess on demand on YouTube or when we posted it and everything like that. So I'm, I'm, I'm very, very happy that you really broke down how the underdog mentality came about because um, I'm not going to say his name, but we had a kid right now. He's getting highly recruited and should get drafted in baseball. And I've seen this kid when he was 12. He wanted the fastest. He wanted the strongest. But underdog mentality, right? Stay with it. Now he grew from five eight. He's six five now. He's wow. Senior years hitting the cover, but I could go on and on about this kid because that was really you know. But thank you for sharing that, right? Um, yeah. So I know you're a teacher, right? So I'm gonna I'm gonna dive a little deep. Um, so in your opinion, right? Because we're 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 gonna talk to just the black student athlete, right? With urban education, what needs to change? so the black student athlete can succeed? Oh, wow. Um, you know, I had the pleasure of being in the schools the last few years, serving right. as more like a mentor. Um, and actually, one of my mentor mentees is in here. I think uh, Mike Michael Taylor is in, is in the building. Michael Taylor, what's happening, man? Make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel, baby. Yeah, man. That's my guy, man. He, he's a, um, an eighth grader now over at... Uh, uh, one of the high schools here, one of the, uh, the suburbs, Pickerton, in, in, in the Columbus area. But um, and he's an incredible talent, too. And he and I, we had our moments where we bumped heads, where he just wasn't rocking with the, you know, the, the direction, the coaching I was giving him. But to answer your question, uh, I think what needs to change is that they need, they need to see more of us, me and you. Um, and that's across the board. That's in, in the city. That's outside the city. They really need to see more examples. Uh, I posted something recently on social media, challenging people to really embrace less talk and more walk. You know, it's time for us really to step up. It's time for us as men um, to really take our, our lives to another level because I think that the more our youth see uh, us actually living it out and showing them and being transparent, because you can't lie to this generation. Like, this no. generation will... They got good, man. Man, they'll Google smoke that. you out so quick. Yeah, you. <laughs> yeah. So you got to keep it 100 with them, man. And um, I think the more transparent you and I are, and the more that we work together. Yes. I, I really believe. Say that one more time. Say that the one more time, that man. we, you and I work together, yeah. we will make a bigger impact because we'll show these other young men and, and young ladies that it's just not about my platform and, 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 and taking the underdog brand or whatever I'm doing to the top. It's about working and partnering with Coach E and in two different states, two different cities, having the same goal. And that's sowing into the lives of these young folk. But we really got to be intentional about that. And um, I think that we're on the right path. I just think that we have to be more consistent. Like this can't be the last time, the one and only that they see us working together. They got to see us more consistently so that they can say, all right, they for real. And then what we'll do is you and I will start attracting other men, black men, that's like, I want to tap in with Kenny, Coach Kenny and Coach E. Now let's do something with this side of the country. Let's do something, you know, in this region. And we'll we'll just, it'll, it'll grow from there, man. Man, you, you couldn't say it that any better, man. That's, <laughs> that, that's going to be the... Uh... That's going to be the screenshot that we're going to send out across the world and everything, challenging everybody. Hey, let's do it. Let's put them on notice, man. You already know. Um, so I am going to kind of talk about the obstacles as a coach, right? Um, mm -hmm. And I see a couple coaches that join in and players, which is which is great, right? Because, you know, as a baseball coach, basketball coach, you know, football coach, hockey coach, whatever it is, you know, there's some obstacles that we face with. I call it the three-headed monsters, the parents, the kids, and the system. Yes. And all three of those things are going to be working 
not productively with each other, right? So what are some obstacles that you have faced as a coach? I think the biggest obstacle that I faced as a, as, as a coach is um, the unrealistic expectations of parents. Um, and you I have to cut deep here. <laughs> no, hold on, let me sit up. Yes, sir. <laughs> Come on with I think that I think and I'm I'm talking straight from the hip. I'm talking straight from experience and transparency. You know, my, my mom and dad, they did the best that they could with whatever they knew up until this point at that point in life of raising me and my brothers and sister, right? But that doesn't mean that they knew what it what it took to get their child prepared to play a professional sport. Right. Man. So like they saying stuff to me like at the age of 13 and 14 like oh you're going to the league you're I'm like I'm thinking like am I really like am I really that good so if they knew better to not sow that seed in my head then that what they could have done is they could have said all right we need to evaluate where he is right now across right. you know against national competition right and then let's see where we need to where we need to place him in order for him to obtain that goal not saying that it's not possible, but I'm just saying, like, don't be unrealistic about this and lie to ourselves and lie to our kids, telling them that you are going to the NFL or you're going to the NBA or the MLB. Yep. If they don't even know how to get you there. Now, if you know how to, like, set it up where I got the training, I got I got the, 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 the program that I want to be on, I got the diet and all that, all that stuff in place, then by all means, you know what, you're putting me on the path. But don't just say just because I can throw a ball from, from center <laughs> field, one hop to the plate. Don't tell me that I'm going to the league. Because Absolutely. Who are you to say that? Like, you're, that's a false assessment of that talent. So yes, sir. That, hey, I gotta that, that's a huge shout. obstacle, man. I got to give a couple quick shout-outs. You got the Professional Homegirl podcast. I see you all the way from New York City. Warren T, what's happening, man? This is my buddy from Australia. We're going wow. international. What's up, Warren? Yeah, uh, Coach Young, Tampa, stand up. We got Arkansas. That's that's what it's all about, man. We got the whole globe. Hey, shout out to, to all the right coaches now. that's shout out to all the coaches that's that's taking time out of their, their their lives to sow into these athletes. Like you are really and truly the real MVPs. Absolutely, without a doubt. And um, the the one thing that you you hit upon was the evaluation process, right? Correct. Um, this is when coaches we get crucified. Because, <laughs> you know, it's all good. You know, everybody kicking in the parking lot and everything. And then it's time to evaluate, like, look, your son can go to this D2 school and never come off the field. Yeah. You, I don't think he would do well at this Division One school. I'm not, not, I'm not writing them off, but the D2 school says we paying for everything. D1 school says you got to come out your pocket with it. Fifty thousand dollars or whatever the bill might be. Yep. Tank, I, I I love that you brought that up because a lot of times, and I see it. You know, I got two younger boys and everything. And I remind myself all the time: listen to the message, not to the tone of your emotions. You know what I mean? I love that. Listen to the message, not to the tone and emotions that you might display or you might hear. Right? Yep. Brother Gray, what's happening? Shout out to um. Mr. Gray, that's my frat brother. I coached his son, Amir. His, Amir is signed to Purdue, doing wonderful okay. things in Chicago. But he has been one of the parents who's always been, like, one of the greater parents, right? you like, whoo, if I had everybody like Rod Gray uh, coaching, it'd be easy. Um, <laughs> but I could go on and on about that, right? Um, I oftentimes ask this to everybody who's an HBC alumni that comes on a recess for I talk to, right? Because right now I'm in the middle of – the HBCU war in college sports, right? So I'll give you a little background, right? Mm -hmm. So me, I promote HBCU baseball, I promote HBCU basketball, football. I'm like, yeah, the better black kids need to go to the HBCUs. But as a coach, on the flip side, you know, I'm coaching, I'm seeing all these PWIs coming to the games, coming to everything, writing me yep. emails, writing the kids emails, showing interest, and the yep. black schools you know, I put the target on my back. I don't care who hears this. We're always, quote, unquote, late to the party, right? Yeah. So in your opinion, I ask everybody who played at HBC, how can we enhance the sports programs at HBCUs across the, across the board, D1, D2, NIA, whatever, right? 
how can we enhance that and enhance the experience for the parent and the kid? Well, the student athlete, they ain't kids, they grown at that point. Right. Um, I think number one off the bat, man, it's, it's how is your product being displayed? Um, one of the passions that I have is to, um, I mean, my goal for myself personally is to be a full-time philanthropist. And I would love to one day be able to go back to Kentucky State and really um, fund a lot of the projects that's necessary in order for the, the playing experience to be a great one for those kids. I'm talking about the locker rooms, you know, making sure that those are, uh, at, you know, at a high level. Um, the playing field. I mean, when I would compete against Division One schools or the better Division Two schools, even some of the NAIA schools, I noticed, man, that they had like the in turf infields and 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 they had you know the nice batting cages behind the uh, the dugouts. That actually it, it makes a difference in the way That's that you uh, you perform. So if you are walking onto a field where you got rocks up in the infield and, <laughs> and you know, say so you got weeds in the outfield, man, you really not, you're, you're not taking that performance. Um, you're not going to have the highest level of respect for it. You really got to focus in to ignore that stuff because it will, it will impact your performance. So I really believe that if we actually supported, um, you know, the, the, the push, to get like Kentucky State just got turf uh, on their football field this year, so this upcoming year, well, it, I, they're not going to have it this season. But for next season, you better believe when a when a recruit comes on a visit and they see that turf, they're like, I can see myself going out here and making some plays. But when they see that grass and all that mud, man, it's like, okay, it's cool to be here. I'm a, I'm gonna I'm take advantage of the opportunity. But I'd rather go play down the road at UK because they got the turf, or go down the road to Louisville because they got it, or even like another you know smaller school that actually invested in that. So we got it. We got to do better with the with the product that we have that our athletes are performing on, man. And it makes a big difference. Big facts. Um, and I'm gonna speak to the coaches because you know we have a coaches coalition in Chicago. A lot of people who've been around each other a long time, played against each other, played with each other. And, you know, everybody's back coaching. Um, one of the battles, and I'll, you know, I put myself, I'll be vulnerable in this. Um, one of the battles is coaching and balancing family, right? Um, yes. And just to put myself out there, I don't mind, you know, this is a recess. We're giving it, like you said, straight from the hip, organic and everything. Yes. You know, you come home, I never I have a rule. I never bring home wins and losses and everything, but I do bring home the emotion of the game, right? Mm. So if there's a situation to where somebody didn't perform or I didn't go as hard as I could in practice, I bring that home. And, it, you know, it kind of weighs on my family. And I'm, you know, I ask coaches this all the time that are coaching every day. I'm not talking about the helicopter thing. You do a camp here and there and then you walk off, but who are in the trenches. How do you balance, like, being a productive coach? Because as you and I, not to be long with it, as you and I know, when you coach, you dad, you mama, you the bus driver, you the, <laughs> you the chef, you're everything, right? But, yeah. you know, you still have to have that balance for your own household. And I've heard yeah. the war stories, you know, I've heard the horror stories, I should say, not war stories, I'm sorry, the horror stories of coaches losing their houses for a sport, you know? Yeah, yeah. So how, how's the balance between coaching in your own personal family? Well, um, that's a very interesting, you know, dynamic there. And, um, you know, growing up, I'm a PK. I don't know if you know what a PK is, a pastor's kid. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm also a, a, a pastor's grandkid. So, like, my dad and my granddad both at one point in time had churches in Detroit. Um, and they're both police officers, right? So, like, you know, okay. there was this I, – I share that because I was able to see how um, – I saw it from a couple of different perspectives. I saw how like my grandfather did his family, how it was like church first, then family. And then like my dad kind of flipped it and did family first, then church. So I've kind of seen it from both perspectives. And then for myself, um, our homes is our number one team, right? Okay. Our homes got to be like our number one. If you're in the ministry, that has to be your number one ministry because I look at our homes as like the practice court or the playing field. I mean, the, the practice field, things like that, because 
at the end of the day, um, <laughs> our family is every. It should be. They should mean everything to us, right? So the wins and losses, because I had to learn this this past season where I coached our daughter in eighth grade basketball. Okay. And uh, I coached her her whole season, and it was challenging to separate her from as a player from the daughter, because there were some things that we would go together and, and battle, you know, collectively, uh, and come home and, and take a hell. Right. But I had to really, really like get that in check. This is the first couple games of the season where we kind of struggled with that. I noticed quickly it was impacting our relationship. And I'm like, mm. I'll be darned if I let some middle school season allow uh, she and I to have some discord. But it was a great lesson for the two of us because I had to learn quickly to separate that stuff. And so what I did was I didn't we didn't talk about sports when we came. Once we got into the home, not a car ride, the car ride is, <laughs> is eligible. Because you got you got to talk about it on the ride home, man. Like, it, it's fresh. But once we enter the door, then it's like, all right, all bets are off. We're going we gonna to learn from that, and we're going to move forward, and we'll, we'll work things out in practice. And that way we can kind of, you know, place things in their proper places because the practices, that's what that time is for. But home is for us to be able to, like, be dad and be daughter and have work on that kind of stuff. So – it's a, it's a, trust me, it's a thin line. I know it's, it's, it's so, it's such a uh, tempting thing for us to, to go ahead and like dive into. But as far as wanting to talk about it and wanting to be mad about it, brother, listen, like it ain't even worth it. Like we really yeah. got to tighten that up quick. Absolutely. <laughs> I got to give a quick shout out, man. I got a bunch of people that jumped in and out, but shout out to Gabby Martinez. He just jumped on and everything. Um, Gabby Martinez is a uh, former New York Yankee, led the Yankees and hit in 1997, man. He's been oh, definitely wow. following the recess. Yeah, major sal salute to Gabby Martinez, man. Absolutely. Thank you for uh, tuning in and everything like that. Um, so I know we talked about the balance with the home and everything like that, right? Um, so I know you have the underdog public book publication and everything like that. What else is coming down the pipeline for Kenny Hampton? Oh, man. Um, the book has been an incredible um, blessing to a lot of people already. Um, and it's it's really doing some amazing things in the lives of our youth. So what you're going to see coming up here very soon is you're going to start seeing more programs and more services that I will be pushing out. So I'm big on doing things um, and, and sewing into the whole all things work together, right? So you're going to see things coming from me that's going to talk about how leadership uh, it's, it's, it's in togethership. When you are learning how all things are really working together for your good, then you can turn around and say, all right, well, there's some things that I've overcome. There's some things that I, I'm not happy about. But collectively, they've made me, they mold me into who I am. So I'm really wanting to help people identify that. So I have okay. this uh, formula, man. I call it the, the togethership formula. Okay. And it's taking your highlights plus your lowlights. They equal your trophies. So, for example, like my, my together show formula for myself would be it was a highlight having, you know, being a father. Like parenthood is a big deal, right? Ooh, but uh, and shout out to my baby sister who just just shop, just hopped in here. What's up, uh, baby sister? Hey, Katrina, hold on, Katrina you, Josie. Hey, go subscribe to the YouTube channel, man. I'm just holding the recess. We Absolutely. Eight five, uh, subscribers. We need to get to 200 tonight. Hey, we got to do it tonight. So let's make sure <laughs> we're doing that. Let's make sure we subscribe to the, to the channel for sure. And um, so my highlight, obviously, is, is becoming a father. That's a big deal, right? But it's a low light becoming a father at the age of 21. And you are mm. a senior in college, man. Like, you expect it. And, you, and you're a pastor's kid. And pa people look at the pastor's kid like they're supposed to be, you know, you know, holier than thou and never I, supposed absolutely. to make mistakes, right? So when that happened, you know, that was tough for me. That was a low light in my life. Um, but from that, I've been able to have one of the shiniest trophies in my life, which is my 14-year-old daughter, soon to be 15, who is playing her freshman year of high school basketball this year, and she's doing some amazing things in life. So my highlight plus my low light equals one of my shiniest trophies. But we don't sometimes talk about those trophies because they're it's like they're unseen or we just look at it like, okay, that's just life. No, I want us to start celebrating those things because I'm sure there's some things that you've gone through and there's some highs and lows together. You're like, well, wait a minute. Collectively, that's that's a huge accomplishment in my life. I'm not who I am today because of that. So 
Man, that's that's what you're gonna see a lot more of that coming from me, man. I really want people to understand how powerful it is when we realize how all this that we're going through is truly working together for our good, man. Man, um, you know, I'm, I'm gonna pick on your daughter a little bit. What what high school she's in Columbus, right? Yeah, she's in Columbus. She does uh, she's at Bishop Hartley. Bishop Hartley, okay. It's coming from the CEO, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. <laughs> um, I, I'm gonna pick on her a little bit, you know. You, they say you don't get your stripes earned until you come through Chicago basketball, whether it be uh, girls or boys. So you're going to have to bring up here for well, when it's COVID. We're on the other side of COVID. You're going to have to bring up here, man. And absolutely. We'll, we'll make it big. Hey, absolutely, man. We'll, we'll, we'll bring her over there, man, and, and let her get, get her feet wet. Go ahead and, you know, test the waters a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely, man. So talk to me about, you know, because I see – I see Ohio sports, right? I see Ohio State University, right, which is the mecca of the mecca in college and everything. But then I see it takes a dive kind of, and I'm not picking on Ohio, but I see it takes a dive kind of in the urban areas of Ohio for sports. How is the urban areas of sports in Ohio? Well, um, you know, it, I would say it's thriving. I would say okay. that I ain't going to lie to you, like, sports is, is a big deal here. Okay. Um, and, and it's a lot of um, a lot of parents are, are, are putting a lot of energy and resources into it. And it's a good thing to see. The only downside to it is that I don't I don't see enough uh, of us in baseball. And that's always been an issue. But for some reason, we are missing out on an incredible opportunity for our young people to play a sport that's going to this is a big baseball is a vehicle they could drive for a long time. Ooh, a long time and make make some good money doing it, right? Yep. But um, we all we see is this shiny objects, man, of, of 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 NFL and NBA, not realizing that the road to get there is, is very very difficult, and the there's only so many slots available. But with baseball, you know, you can play single, triple, double A. I mean, you can and then make it to the bigs you can really have a successful career and play the sport a lot longer and be a little bit healthier uh, on the, on the back end of it. If you pursue baseball. So um, that's just, that's been a struggle ever since I've been playing. I'm sure you can relate. I've oh, been, yeah. I've been the only African-American on a, on a team before multiple times and, and that's happened, but it's just, it's just what it is. You know, it's just the dynamic, but I would definitely like to see us make, make some changes with that, man. But uh yeah, I mean Ohio, Ohio sports is especially in Columbus. People out here getting after it, man. Okay. Yeah. So I see everybody. Jo hey, make sure everybody that's joining. I, I gotta tell y'all. Make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel, man. You can type in my name, Ernest Horton. You can type in the recess. You can type in Coach E. Um, Kenny, I know I'm looking at the clock. I don't want IG to kick us off and everything. We're definitely gonna have to do a part two. I'm gonna have to jump on your Zoom. Um, your, your Zoom series and everything yeah, like that. Yeah, absolutely. We're, we're going to have to keep this thing going. Black men coaching, black men husband, black men fathers, the whole yes. black love experience and everything like that, man. Yes. I thank you so much for joining me on The Recess. Now, for everybody who's going to watch this on demand on YouTube or hear it on the podcast, can, if someone wants to get in contact with you, purchase your book. Um, yes or donate to your cause and donate to sports programs in Ohio, how can they get in contact with you? Well, um, it's very simple. So for me, it's www.kennyrhampton.com. And then on social media platforms, it's simply Kenny R. Hampton. Um, I, I've made it as simple as I possibly can. And it's just my name across the board. Um, but I would love to, uh, to partner with, uh, with, with anyone that's, that's trying to, to sow into the lives of these young folks. Um, I'm in a zone right now. I'm in my, I'm walking in my purpose. I'm excited about it. It took a while to get here because I had to like really detach myself from the disappointment of who I didn't, you know, who I wasn't. Yeah. Right. Uh, which is a difficult, sometimes pill to swallow, but at the end of the day, you know, um, it, it's a cool experience to be able to like mentor these young folk and really see them get the results that they're seeking because of the uh, the the mentorship that we have with them, so hey man, you know again, thanks so much for hey, having me on. Absolutely, we mean you got to do something real soon. Oh, where we um, 
keep this going, man. I mean, brothers that have played the game at a high level, I think that that's another thing that we can do to even shed light on um, that part of our lives so that these younger kids can see, oh, wait a minute, I could go ahead and play baseball. I mean, Coach E, Coach Kenny did it. Let me go ahead and be the next, you know, shortstop or next great outfielder to come out of my city. So Facts. let's do it, man. I I'm all I'm all down for that, man. Oh, you already know. Um, like I said, man, thank you so much for joining everybody that's listening and watching. Make sure if you're seeing us on YouTube, you subscribe to the channel. Make sure if you're watching this on Instagram, make sure you follow Kenny R. Hampton and you follow Coach E. O. F. Giru. Subscribe to his channel, subscribe to my channel, and we're gonna keep this thing going. From 2020 to 2029. We're going to keep it there we going. We're going to make it a whole plan and everything like that. I love it. Absolutely. So, um, this is Coach E. I'm signing off. Brother Hampton, thank you so much for joining us. Hey, likewise, man. It was a pleasure. Let's do it again. So